Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to use the limit of the difference quotient to find a derivative and then evaluate the derivative at a given point. So let's get started on that. The function that we were given is y equals 2x squared minus 5x. And the derivative, y prime, can be thought of as the limit of the difference quotient. The limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Now this f is the function f of x here, in this case, 2x squared minus 5x. So a lot of times it's easier for folks to kind of think about it kind of off to the side separately. What is f of x plus h if f of x is 2x squared minus 5x? So remember the x in the original function is a placeholder, right? So you can think of it as a box. And we need to take whatever's in the box, square it, multiply it by 2, and then subtract a multiple of 5 times that quantity. So in this case, what's in the box is the x plus h. So we're going to have to put it into each of those positions in the expression. So we're going to have 2 times x plus h squared minus 5 times x plus h. Now squaring out x plus h um, is a source of error for a lot of people, but after you've done it a few times, it gets easier. You can think of it as foiling. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2 times x plus h times x plus h. Just to remind you to avoid one of the most common errors in algebra and calculus, which is a lot of times people think they can just say x squared plus h squared, but that's not the case. Then you're forgetting the third term. So remember to FOIL x times x is x squared, um, x times h is xh, h times x is xh, and then h times h is h squared. Uh, distributing the negative 5, we have minus 5x minus 5h. So this is going to be 2x squared plus, oh, actually, we can combine those like terms. So these two are actually 2xh's, and then we are doubling that. So that's going to be plus 4xh plus 2h squared minus 5x minus 5h. So the key part here is to get used to squaring out x plus h and getting x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Um, okay, so that was just the f of x plus h part that we just found here. And from that, we are going to subtract f of x. What's f of x? Well, that's just the original function, 2x squared minus 5x. Okay, so let's plug that into our expression. So we have the limit as h goes to 0 of 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared minus 5x minus 5h. That's the f of x plus h part. And then from that, we're going to subtract this guy here minus 2x squared minus 5x. Make sure to put it in parentheses because you're subtracting the whole expression which changes the signs. So we get the limit as h goes to 0 of 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared minus 5x minus 5h minus 2x squared plus 5x all over h. Now what often happens in these problems is all of the terms that don't have an h in them cancel out. That's going to be important when we go to evaluate the limit in a minute. So for example, positive 5x and negative 5x cancels out, 2x squared and negative 2x squared cancels out. So we're left with the limit as h goes to 0 of 4xh plus 2h squared minus 5h all over h. 
Now, in the previous chapter, we learned about taking limits, and we said that ideally we'd like to be able to just plug in zero, but notice that in this case that would give us a zero in the denominator, which would be undefined, so that's a problem. So if you can reduce algebraically so that that h factors out and cancels, we can get an equivalent function where we can plug in the h. So we're going to have the limit as h goes to zero, and I'm going to divide each of these terms by h. Notice they each have a factor of h. So we get 4x plus 2h squared divided by h is just 2h minus 5h divided by h is just 5. And no longer do we have the problem that if we plug in 0 for h, we're going to get undefined. So now we can just plug in. Notice at this step I stopped writing the limit because I'm taking the limit. So I don't need to write that anymore. So we get 4x minus 5h. This is our y prime. This is our derivative. So in the original problem, we were asked to evaluate that at the point negative 1, 7. What that means is that we're going to plug in x equals negative 1 and see what we get. So y prime evaluated at x equals 1 is equal, or negative 1, excuse me is equal to 4 times negative 1 minus 5, which is going to give us negative 9. So the two parts of the problem, here's y prime, and here's y prime evaluated at negative 1. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video.